How to Become an Effective Negotiator. Peter Riley graduated from Harvard Law School and is now a law school professor and director of negotiation training at the Saltman Center for Conflict Resolution at UNLV's Boyd School of Law in Las Vegas, Nevada. He's also a widely sought out consultant, media expert, and professional speaker in the field of negotiation. Don't make the opening offer. Let the other side make the opening offer. But the obvious question is, what if, the, what if their offer that they give is terrible, right? And by the way, the term oftentimes used for that first offer is an anchor. They throw out a first number that sort of anchors the negotiation. That number is kind of floating in the air, and the final number might end up around there. But I say that if you can do what I call erasing the anchor, if you're very good, and one way to do that is a flinch, like somebody offers you a... a if the chairman had said, Edison, I'll give you $1,000 for that, if he had said, that's ridiculous, that's preposterous, that's erasing the anchor. Donald Trump is very good at erasing the anchor. He doesn't just flinch verbally. He actually stands up and walks out of the room. And several negotiation books actually have called it the Donald Trump walkout. I actually heard a story, though, of somebody who tried the Donald Trump walkout. He got up, he walked out, slammed the door behind him, but he had accidentally walked into a closet. Uh, so you got, you've got to be very careful if you're going to try some of these. Learn about your counterpart when you go into a negotiation. It's just incredible how much information you can get on the internet now. If you can't find information on the internet, try contacting people who've negotiated with that, with that party before. They'll tell you all sorts of things about their negotiation style, about do they make absurd, absurd offers, opening offers, what, is their, what kind of concessions do they make, do they lie in the negotiation. You can get all this information from other people who've negotiated with them. Peter has presented to the USA Today newspaper, the National Park Service, the American Marketing Association, and many other groups and associations. His research, published in the prestigious Negotiation Journal, describes how training and negotiation can actually increase emotional intelligence. Every presentation Peter makes has a lively question and answer session. <laughs> Everybody's a born negotiator. Every child is an amazing negotiator, right? Think about it. Think how brilliant children are at negotiating and why are they so good at negotiating. Uh, first of all, they understand that no is just an opening position, right? When they hear the word no, they know, okay, that's where they start. I'm going to get them somewhere else, right? Uh, they are incredibly relentless, completely relentless uh, negotiators, so don't, they, they will not stop. And um, they aim high. They, when they go into negotiation, they shoot for the moon, right? Absolutely, which a lot of people, when they get older, they, they don't have the guts to do. And finally, they're good at building coalitions, right? If you don't give them what they want, they'll go and work, work with their siblings. They'll go work with their grandparents. So I think that as far as, you know, myself, I think I probably, when I was a kid, I'm a, I was a much better negotiator than I am now. But I'm doing all this reading to try to, to figure out what I knew when I was a child. But I really think that, you know, reading books like Getting to Yes and Getting Past No, a lot of this you know sort of intuitively. I guarantee you'll use these every day in almost every conversation that you have. The feedback has been extremely positive. Your program has been noted as one of our strongest programs this year. We hope to work with you again in the future. It's obviously extremely difficult to mind read, which I say, which is why I say it's better to try to ask people for information. So much of negotiation is about acquiring information and also withholding information. On acquiring information, that top bullet, one of the best negotiators I've ever met is a guy who's a former Pulitzer Prize winning uh, investigative journalist. He's brilliant. He can talk to you and ask you all these open questions, open ended questions at the top. Open ended questions are questions that I cannot answer with just a yes or no answer. So he's asking all these questions who what where when why if he asks those questions tell me about it how long did it take I can't give just a yes or no answer I've got to start talking and giving information and I might start revealing incredibly important information Peter's highly interactive presentation received rave reviews from an audience of high-powered lawyers government workers and business people he was such an effective speaker that we plan to invite him to speak at future events Every semester I ask my students to come up with a negotiation role model. Who do they think is an excellent negotiator either in their own lives or it could be somebody in a movie, on television. Every semester somebody comes up with this character, Gordon Gekko from the movie Wall Street. And I always ask them, why do you think Gordon Gekko is such a good negotiator? They always give me answers like at the bottom there. Well, Gordon Gekko is tough, Gordon Gekko is aggressive, relentless, he steamrolls people and he wins. And folks, I love to win too, and I love to be relentless, but I, I want you to know that there are other characters, and I like to refer to another 
television character who has a different style from Gordon Gecko. He's more like, well, he asks questions. He's got a completely different style. Of course, I'm talking about De Detective Columbo starring Peter Falk. These are the two lines he says throughout in any episode. I don't understand here. Can you please explain that? He says that over and over again, which is what I was talking about earlier. He's essentially an investigative reporter, building rapport with people, trying to get information from them. By the end of the show, everybody's like, yeah, you're right, I shot the person. I mean, it's incredible. Peter's mastery of the theory, blended with a dynamic and engaging presence, make him an ideal presenter. He has a special talent for connecting with people and providing concrete strategies and tools along the way. In 1979, Lee Iacocca went to Capitol Hill in search of a billion dollars in loan guarantees to help bail out Chrysler. And when he went to Capitol Hill, uniformly the members of Congress said, at first, said, Iacocca, we're sorry, but the business world is a jungle. You're obviously not mean enough and lean enough to make it. Another company is going to have to come along and be tougher and rougher and do what you're not able to do. Then Lee Iacocca said, went, went to every member of Congress and basically said, do you have any idea, if you, don't give, if you don't give me this loan guarantee, do you know how many people in your district are going to lose their jobs and blame you? He got the loan guarantee, and Chrysler's still here. But look what he did. He got into their minds, right? What do members of Congress want? They want to stay in office. They want to get reelected. He was able to frame the negotiation to tell them what's in it for them. I mean, that's so much of what a negotiation is about, and he did it beautifully. He's helped thousands of working professionals become effective, and fearless negotiators. You can do the same for you and your group. Peter Riley, for your next meeting or event.